We are at the Chinese American Convention and interview Mr. Mark Z. Uh, so, Mark, and tell us what do you do? Sure. Well, I'm a lawyer here in Washington D.C. I'm basically an employment lawyer, but I represent people who work in the federal government and in the defense contracting world. So these are individuals who work at the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, and they may encounter some problems with their agencies. And I was speaking here today because of cases I've handled over the last 25 years of Asian Americans who work for the U.S. government or as contractors, and they encountered problems with their security clearances or other investigations that might and often are related to the fact that they have relatives overseas and their connections to countries like the PRC, Taiwan, Korea, you name it, any, any country over in the Far East. Okay, so among all your customers, and how many of them are Chinese people, Chinese American, and what are the uh, typical cases you handled? So I, I've certainly handled probably a few dozen cases of Asian Americans, uh, PRC, Taiwan, South Korea predominantly, and usually they're defense contractors or federal employees in agencies such as the National Geospatial Agency, which is a satellite agency, the NRO, National Reconnaissance Office, also deals with satellites. And something has happened to their security clearance. They're under investigation by the U.S. government. Sometimes it's not necessarily anything they did, but that they have ties back to their home countries, that they travel back to the PRC or Taiwan to visit family members, that they send money to their family members overseas. So what's wrong with this? You know, it's horrible. There's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, of course. There's not, certainly nothing illegal about it. And most of us, obviously, we came from somewhere. My family uh, came to the United States 100 years ago and, and a little bit less, depending on the country, from, mostly from Europe. And it's fantastic to have relationships back to your home countries or, or wherever you might have come from. In the national security context, though, the concern is not as much about the individual, it's about the country. So the PRC, Taiwan, South Korea, even though we have different relationships with them, clearly, they all engage in espionage activities against the United States, economic espionage primarily. And allies do. The, the government of Israel conducts significant espionage activities against the United States. It doesn't have to be a, an enemy to have a problem. And it's the risk that applies or arises from the relationship to that country. And the theory is that, so if you go back and forth to whatever country, the PRC, Colombia, South America, you go back and forth, if you have family members there, that you are a greater risk to the United States because maybe that country, especially if it's a country that we don't have good relations with, may threaten you or your family members or threaten to take your property that you might have in that foreign country and that may put at risk classified information. Deciding security clearances is all a predictive analysis and these are the, the models that the government has created over the decades to try and assess what the threat is to the national security of the United States. So how do they identify this? Because, you know, this is, sounds like really scary to many of, most of the people. Uh, you know, some people, they may, they, they may know nothing about it. It's very normal, you know, family relationships. But uh, what do you just talk about? It kind of really sounds scary to me. It can be scary. And, and oftentimes you're right. The people don't know that anything they're doing could cause a problem. Yeah. I mean, who would think if you send $200 to your elderly parents in whatever country, which may be a lot of money back in the home country versus here, that that's going to cause a problem. And, and the reality is it, it usually doesn't cause a problem. And we have to just mitigate the concerns that exist. It, it is, it's a very, it's a horrible situation because sometimes people have to make decisions as to what the relationship is that they have with their family members. I've had any number of clients who did not go back to the countries they originated from after being here for many many years they didn't go back to the funeral of their parent I had that in the in the PRC I've had that in Russia because they were concerned if they went back that would look bad to the United States it's a horrible situation to, to put one in but unfortunately at least if I'm helping people get their security clearances 
those are the sort of the, the steps that I, and guidance that I have to give to minimize the concerns that the U.S. government may have. You know, especially for nowadays and the trade war between China uh, and the United States, you know, caused a lot of fear, I would say. And many of the people, uh, actually they're not, actually they, they, they really don't really understand the issue. And what are the particularly, uh, I mean, the government or your agencies will see that uh, the suggestions you would like to give to people to, to be stay safe? Well, especially because of the trade war, it's just increasing tension between the PRC and here, which will increase concerns the government has about Chinese nationals who are still engaging in, dual citizens who are still engaging with China. Look, I, I, I never give advice to someone in the sense of, oh, I want you to sever your connections to your family members. All I can do is give guidance is this is what would minimize the U.S. government's concerns over if you are going to get a security clearance or if your family member is going to get a security clearance. Your, your child is in grad school and may want to go to work for a U.S. agency or a defense contractor. And a lot of it's just to, to, to think intelligently. You know, be careful with who you're associating with back in the home country. You know, you, you certainly want to stay away from people who work for the government, especially in the military or intelligence community, that's for sure. Uh, but if you can minimize your travel, uh, but if not, and if you're gonna, still going to talk to your family members, which you know nobody wants to interfere with the love you have for your family members, don't talk to them about the work you do here in the United States. You mean any work? Anywhere. I mean, you know, most of the time, what my clients will always say is, "Well, anytime my you know 85-year-old mother wants to talk to us here." How are the grandkids? Is everybody feeling okay? Things like that. You know, you just got to be really vague about the type of work that you do if you work in a cleared atmosphere. Uh, and it's even better if they don't know, if the family members don't know that you work in that environment, because you can say to the U.S. government that there wouldn't be any threat. Because even if the foreign government went to my family member and said, you know, if you don't tell your child to you know, give us classified information, we'll do something, they may, they'll go, well, what are you talking about? You know, I don't even know what my son or daughter does back in the United States. Um, I mean, most of the time, there's never any actual threat that we know of. I've, ne I've never had a case where the foreign government actually threatened the family member, but it's all, like I said, about predictive analysis, and that's how the government, our, the U.S. government, looks at this in trying to figure it out. And there's no formula. I mean, the government just looks at our government, only looks at spies that have come beforehand to try and predict spies who may come later. So that's why we do see people within the Asian community, people within the Jewish community like myself, where we get targeted, or I wouldn't say targeted, I'll say are suspected more so than others. Because why? Because the Chinese government spies, because the Israeli government spies. Uh, or if you have a family member, if you, you, know, if you marry a foreign national. I, I had a case of an African-American Southern Baptist from Tennessee, and he faced loss of his security clearance because of Israel. Why? Because he married a white Jewish woman who kept going back and forth to Israel. And her connections to Israel impacted him. So. It, it, it really does go across the board, and it's not as much targeted to the person as it is to the country. And the reality is Asian, certain Asian countries, certain South American countries, countries around the world, other than the countries we're most closely allied with, what we call the Five Eyes, England, Canada, uh, Australia, New Zealand, everybody else spies on us, and we spy on them, so that creates a security concern. Well, from what you've been talking about, I feel like, you know, this is applied to almost anybody, right? So uh, in our daily life like this, and how, like, you know, some of the high-tech companies in Silicon Valley, they receive the list from government to stay away with a business relationship with some, particularly some companies from China. So how do they identify the list? Where do, does this come from? So it would come from intelligence sources where the U.S. government would have information that ties a certain company to the Chinese government. And obviously Silicon Valley is 
highly at risk because of the number of people who have security clearances in and around Silicon Valley because of the work that they do at these tech companies who contract with the United States. And you have to remain vigilant and be very careful with respect to when you receive emails from anyone who purports to be from out of the country or who approaches you at conferences, especially because the Chinese government in particular, it's they don't conduct espionage in the same way that the Americans and the Russians do. Historically, the American and Russian governments would, I would describe it as use brute force. We're going to recruit someone who's going to infiltrate the CIA and the FBI and who's going to steal classified information. The Chinese government is more likely to have someone working in a tech company or, or an academic position who how, will then... How many of this do you have uh, evidence seeing so? I, this, I'm only repeating what the government studies show. I, so, because I'm, of course, I'm not government. I represent people against the government. Um, but this is what the government studies have said, that these are the approaches that the Chinese government has made. And they will approach American scientists, and I'm saying generically, you know, anyone who's an American scientist, whether Chinese origin or, or European origin, and, and try and befriend them and try and gain access to information. And it doesn't have to be classified information because what's called the mosaic theory, which is compiling multiple pieces of unclassified information and compiling it together and it creates something that's classified. Don't you think that they, they made a mistake or they wrongfully, you know, doubt some people? Oh, absolutely. No, no doubt this about may, it. This may happen many times, right? It, it has happened quite a number of times, and and that causes great. So how concerns. how do you how do you protect those people, being you know, treated mistreated? You know, you you hope for the due pro of due process of law, and that the system will work, and it doesn't always work. I mean, that's for sure, and we can come up with any number of examples of it. And the worst thing you could ever face is if you are literally facing down the barrel of the U.S. government, whether it's in a criminal case or even an administrative case. It'll cost you thousands of dollars in legal fees, incredibly stressful, and you, you, what you especially need to do, you need to hire a good lawyer. I mean, that's where it comes down to. Those so what, what is a good lawyer, you mean? You know, how, what is the qualifications for a good lawyer? Well, you need a good lawyer who's experienced in the field. So for, for those who are in Silicon Valley, if you're going to be applying for a position that requires a security clearance, the best piece of advice I can give you is before you fill out the form, which is called an SF-86, Standard Form 86, National Security Questionnaire, before you fill that form out, you should. contact a lawyer who does this kind of work, who does security clearance work, to help you fill the form out so that you can mitigate any concerns that the government, you, we can anticipate that the government has, so you can get the job, so you can get the security clearance. Because most times, what dooms someone is what they tell the government because they didn't realize oh, yeah. or understand that they needed to be concerned about certain types of information. And I'm not talking about that they did anything wrong. Again, if they have family members who are back in the PRC or Taiwan or everywhere or anywhere, it doesn't matter what the country is, if they have family members there, they will need to mitigate the fact that they have family members in those countries. And there are ways to do that, but if you don't talk to someone who knows how to do that, what to say, it only increases the risk that you'll have a problem. Yeah, it really increases the risk. Actually, you know, those people being honest and being really kind to telling all the information is probably unnecessary, but causing trouble for themselves, right? They, uh, people volunteer far too much information that, that was not necessary or don't explain it. They will, there's one section on the form that requires you to, to put down those who, foreign nationals who you have a close and continuing contact with, who you also have affection, obligation. That's influence. a trick, right? Well, the problem is, if you think about everyone who's at this conference, I, I imagine, I bet most of the people here are dual citizens. They're U.S. citizens and from wherever country they came from. Those people would not go down on the list in this section. This section only applies to foreign nationals, not dual citizens. But a lot of people will put down dual citizens, and that just means more people for the U.S. government to investigate ties to. Uh, or they don't put down information that is that needs to be on the form. Uh, maybe they don't realize that, that they this section applies. 
And then when they have an interview or a polygraph, if they're going to go work for an intelligence agency or contract to one, they then re reveal additional names, and then the government thinks you lied and you withheld the information the first time. You didn't. You just you didn't understand the form, or maybe a, a different question was asked. Wow, that's very helpful information. So if some people need help from you, and how do they contact you? Yeah, the best way to contact me is just to email me. So if you Google my name, Mark Zaid, Z-A-I-D, Mark with a K, my website will come up, and my email is just mark at markzaid.com. So anyone who has questions about security clearances, how to get one, how to fill out the forms, if you're facing an investigation uh, internally, whether it's a background investigation or uh, even if it's a criminal investigation, those are things we can help with. Okay, thank you. Sure, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you.